Wow, wouldn't it be nice if after all our orthodontic work the patient's teeth would just remain straight? Great results should just stay put on their own merits, it seems like. Seems only fair. Unfortunately, time, experience, and research have shown that virtually all cases relapse. It's the human body, after all. Forces in and around the dentition are constantly changing as we age, and rebound or relapse is inevitable. After all the effort expended treating a case to a good result, you can see why patients are upset when this rebound starts to occur, either immediately or over a prolonged period of time. So, what's the answer? Well, we feel that the only real answer for maintaining the gain is a quality result and lifetime retention. The old adage, wear your retainers for a year and it should be okay, is an outdated and unproven maxim. The patients that have long-term stability are the ones that continue to wear the retainers. For a lifetime, it's that plain and that simple. But, you say, how can that be accomplished? Well, the most important retainer is usually the lower. If the lower arch starts to collapse, the upper will surely follow. So having a small, comfortable and stable bonded lower retainer that can be left in the mouth for long periods of time, and I mean 25 years or more, is the answer in many cases. Enter Extend LTR for Extend Long-Term Retainer. This lower cuspid to cuspid retainer is fabricated from O27 beta titanium and has flattened 20 degree beveled ends with retention notches that not only ensure patient comfort but also assures retention of this small super elastic wire for long intervals of time. Now, just for fun, to show you what we're talking about and the uh, techniques involved, let's go through the retention regimen with one of our just abandoned patients, Haley. Uh, here's Haley before we started treatment, and here's Haley the day that we removed her appliances. Today we're gonna to take the braces off on one of my favorite patients, Haley. Haley, we only have two things we need to do before we take them off. First of all, you have to promise me that you didn't tell anybody you were getting them off. Uh, okay, well, maybe we'll let that one slide. All right, the second thing we always do is we always have a little vote. And since there are three of us here, Lena, you and I, we vote about whether or not you get them off. Two out of three and you get them off, okay? So what do you think? I get them off. Okay, so you're vote one. Yes. And Lena? I vote for it too. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to go along with it. Three out of three, we take them off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. All right, let's do it, Haley. Okay, we're gonna use um, a new wire um, made by Reliance called Extend LTR, Extend uh, Long-Term Retainer. Um, this is made, uh, fabricated of 027 TMA, so it's a real small wire, very comfortable for the patient. It's beveled on the ends and has serrations uh, built into it, so uh, you have good retention at the cuspids. Generally, when I'm going to adapt this, I'll take it with a little hemostat, uh, needle nose hemostat like this, and then I can put it in the mouth to manipulate it, uh, move it around and adjust it. Now the crucial thing with this is that it needs to be 100% passive when you put it in. Because it's a, a, a super elastic arch wire, what happens is that if it's bowed in and you bring it up against the teeth, obviously it'll move the cuspids outward or inward depending upon uh, that activation. So your big thing is to keep it uh, very passive to the teeth before you bond it. Um, we also uh, know that this is a very friable wire. It's not a wire that you want to use uh, like a three prong on. If we're going to make bends, we want to bend anything around a, uh, a, round, uh, a rounded uh, end of the plier. So a bird beak is a very good wire for doing that. We can shape it using a bird beak. You can shape it using a uh, contouring plier like this. Uh, again, this is not going to, to fracture this friable wire. Uh, what we don't want to do is we don't want to go to the point right at the junction, the retention junction and the wire and use a three prong because it'll fracture the wire. Once we get it in, in, in cemented in place, it's a wire that can last, well, years and years. We've had some 027 TMAs in for over 25 years. A small measuring wand uh, that comes with a kit is used to measure for the appropriate sized wire. 
coming in sizes 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26 millimeters. The wand allows us to measure from the midline to the contact between the lateral and cuspid to pick the correct size. Now, once the appropriate size is selected, the wire can be fitted interorally. This is usually made easier by holding the end of the wire with the small needle nose hemostat while these adaptations are being made. The wire needs to be adapted so that it is passive when placed. If there are large marginal ridges on the cuspids, these should be smoothed with a small diamond burr. You know, perhaps the single most important tip I can give you in assuring long-term retention of this wire is to thoroughly mi micro-etch the entire lingual surface of the cuspids. Uh, this cleans any debris and makes the target teeth that much more disposed to etching gels. After thoroughly micro-etching the cuspids, isolation to keep the target teeth dry, dry is warranted. Um, isolation either using some cotton rolls or actually more preferably an isolation device uh, such as the one shown here uh, would be our preference. Cuspids are thoroughly rinsed and dried using an aspirator. The isolated area should be kept dry and isolated during the rest of the placement procedure. A standard etching gel is then used to coat the entire lingual surface of the cuspids uh, and it's left in place for 30 to 60 seconds. A thin coat of a sure bond enhancer, a desiccating agent, is gently dabbed on the etch surface. Uh, I should note that no other light cure sealant is needed when using a sure. The cuspids are then gently dried again. The previously adapted 027 extend wire is then inserted into the floss loops and the wire positioned um, on the flat surface of the incisors, you know, really well above the rounded cinguli. The loops are snug to hold the ideally positioned wire in place. A small dollop of lingual retainer composite is extruded from a CR syringe over and around the retention ends of the wire. The composite should be adequate to leave at least a one millimeter thickness over the wire. This should help ensure patient comfort. The composite is smoothed with a small pledget dipped in a sure bond enhancer. Starting at the gingival surface, the composite is thinned progressively towards the incisal edge making sure that there are no ledges or excess composite in the contacts between the teeth. The dental floss is removed by releasing one end and pulling the other through the contacts. The final result is a small, comfortable, and long-term retainer that allows for hygiene cleanings without disturbance. This small, comfortable, and yet stable, hygienic retainer is left in the patient's mouth for as long as they will allow it. So, Haley, what do you think? They're awesome. Oh, you're so beautiful, honey. <laughs> Enjoy those. You smile a lot now, okay? okay. Millions and millions of times. Oh, because yeah, you got a great one, kiddo.